color is important with collage, but so is contrast. Black and white can offer a really amazing palette. magazine. This is what I normally like to do when time is on my side. I like going through my ephemera one by one without anything in mind in terms of collage and just choosing images that I that I like and what I end up doing is categorizing them. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use these particular pieces in this collage today, but what I did here was choose lots of pieces because that's how I try to do my work. But I'm also just gathering, I'm not necessarily going to use them today, but just gathering and deciding what I might use in the future and putting it away. What I have at my house is a file cabinet and I have different categories for collage ephemera. I have animals, body parts, color, design, pattern, male, female, vintage, cars, structures. So I would go through this little pile I just created and I'd say well definitely female, uh, maybe like a minimal or a background. These would fall under the category of color or pattern, animals, background or structure. And of course, male, female, I actually have a folder on the floor that has both male and female people in the image, female, maybe body. But this is something that I like to do, again, if I don't have a general idea I just work with this and file them away for later. Then when I want to create something, even then I'll just grab a folder, like I'll grab a background folder, I'll grab the female folder, and I'll grab a pattern folder. And I'll look through what I have in those folders and cut out what I want, take what I want, put it back, and I usually can come up with something. That organization helps me when I am stuck and when I need to... I want to make something and it's kind of ready for me instead of just grabbing a magazine and going for it. Now, when I have um, a large book or magazine, I usually keep that intact and I don't worry so much about cutting it apart. But some of my magazines, sometimes I want to clear up my space and I will strip the magazine bare. This magazine, I'll go through it again. I'll go through it a couple times before it's done. Uh, there's still some really great images in here and just flipping through here now and I see some wonderful color that I would like to use in the future. I just don't feel like cutting it out right now. I know what I'm going to be doing today. So yeah, I'll come back to this later and I'll go through this magazine again. And I usually have a different approach to the magazine. I'll see something like this and say, oh, I want this, I want this jewel. But today it's like, no, not feeling it, but I'm not gonna toss it because I know it still has possibility. So what I, what I am gonna do today, I wanna do a minimal palette feeling the black and white thing going on. I love the minimal palette. And I'm gonna use this image. This is gonna be my focal point. I think I have a title already in mind. I'm not gonna reveal it yet because I don't know if that's gonna be the title, but this will be my focal point. It might be something that's more minimal and I'll keep it, keep it small. And I already have an idea what I would like to do. And I think I'm going to do some cutting and if you can join me for that in time lapse. <music>
careful cutting done just now. I'm going to keep these over here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this rainbow spectrum. I might, and if I do, it's going to be another careful cut. And there is this for a background. Although I am leaning towards a minimal palette with not too much color, my focal point is black and white. And speaking of my focal point, I'm going to cut him. There are some other small pieces that I plan to use. Everything pretty small. A pair of gloves. I know those might be a little hard to see. Maybe when I was cutting those, you were... And it's really hard to see. I apologize for the black mat here. Really hard to see now. And I just want to cut in between these fingers on these gloves. We'll see if they make it into the collage. I had this already cut. Some jewels, crystals, maintaining that limited palette of color. I also cut this out. It was the interior of a car. I have this. It might be too small for the collage, ultimately. But I'll show you what I'm planning on doing. Let's get this guy cut. And all I want from this image is the hand and the head and neck. So I'm going to cut this little area here first. I like to cut these smaller areas, these detailed areas of negative space before it, I do any major cutting. The reason being for myself is the paper has tensile strength still. That's a preference. I don't know if it is a rule in cutting. And while I cut, I am drawing my exact line very slowly around the natural line of the figure, in this case the face. I'm pressing down with my other hand to keep my line straight and clean and also to keep me from making an error. A small piece, toss that. So now we have a nice negative space that exists here. I'm gonna cut the hand. Again, I am thinking about that um, negative space and, well, there's something more that I wanna do with this. Let me show you what I want to do. I'm going to cut along the hairline here, slowly following the natural line of the shadow to here, okay? And here as well, pick it up again. Sometimes I pick it up again, I just use my blade to cut a little bit more and continue with my cut. I like to do a continuous cut. Why? Because it's just cleaner and it keeps things more intact. I'm going along the beard line and here at the mustache, I'm going to cut here across the mustache. Uh, did I want to do that? Um, Let's see. Let me do this. I'm going to cut along these lips to the thumb. And here we cut along the angle of the thumb to here, the wrist. I do not want any of this jacket. I am cutting the the wrist at this point. I can clean it up later. Okay. So this is all going to be one piece, the hand and the face. 
continue with cutting the hand. I can use my scissors. I can also use my exacto. I'm going to use the exacto just because I have it in hand. I have a good groove going with the cuts and just drawing along, just kind of pulling the blade through the paper. The blade is very sharp. I just changed it before the video started. So I don't need to press really hard. The paper is fairly strong, but not too strong. And now for semi reveal. Okay, there's a little part here that's trapped. This is not a big deal. I can come in with my blade, just the edge of the blade, and that's just enough to remove it. This is what I want. This is what I want. There's some edges here I'm not crazy about, like the finger has a bit of a point on it that doesn't look natural. I'm going to come in with the scissors and clean it. A little nubs that are going on here. I'm not too crazy about them. I know I was cutting along the mustache and there is a cut here. It's not a big deal. It's not going to be noticeable. And if I'm really feeling uncertain about it, I can always tape it on the back. I don't feel the need to do that just yet. Now I want to keep this part of the head as well. I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead with my scissors and I'm going to start making that cut. see how this turns out. This is my idea. Going for something absurd and surreal. That is definitely my comfort zone in collage. And I think collage in general, it just lends itself to absurdity. Cutting along the natural line of the head and the neck. Going to get to the neck. I'm just going to cut through here. No template today, I don't think. There and there. I'll finish off the cutting right here. I want to keep the neck. Show you why in just a moment. Nothing to my madness here. I just want the neck. I do not want any of the leather jacket. So I will cut that. Should look good. All right. Everything else, I don't think I really can use this for anything else, unless for color. I'll just put it off to the side, but I'm not sure. It's probably going to, it's going to end up being trash. So now it's significantly smaller, and it also is quite surreal because it looks like he's removing his face, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I can tilt it like this, and I do love this background. Although it's a little, it's not so much that it's busy, it's also black and white. So this might benefit from a more colorful black background. Could. I did kind of have my heart set on this, but I'm not sure now if it's going to work. I was also considering this bridge. I want everything maybe around him to be colorful. And what I was doing, the idea I had had to do with, with watches and time and tucking these things in, I'm still kind of hung up on that. I think I want to do that. I thought about cutting away the eye like I norm like I do quite a bit in my collages where I cut away eyes and this isn't totally black and white it's a dark green that can be very interesting for a contrast so what I am going to do I think I will cut away his eye and his eyebrow I could do both and then place them atop. Uh, okay, so again, slow cut. I'd like to include this shadow on his eye. I'll just include all of this. Still trapped, come in with the knife. Now we're free. 
go ahead and cut this brow. I cut that pretty much to the line. This watch face is going to cover a lot of the eye area, so my cut my cutting doesn't have to be super precise, but I like keeping things clean till the very end, unless I'm absolutely certain things are going to be the way I want them to be. So those are cut out and I can put them back the way I want. Is the eyebrow necessary? Yeah, it is. I think it's just enough contrast. Um, we also have this watch face. Let's see if this looks better. To the side. Will this be more interesting? I do like that. <laughs> I like them both. Yeah, it, it makes it pop out a lot more. This is, oh, this belongs to this watch face also. So I had something like this in mind. Background will be important. I also have a camera, black and white camera. I need to get a background, I think, just to make it easier for everybody to see it. I had originally thought when I started this project using this female image. It's a, from a vintage magazine, about 30, 40, well over 40 years old. I know it's from the 80s. And I was going to do something like this. Uh, I think it's too much. I don't really like it. So I'm going to keep it, keep it more simple. Keep it simpler. Let me grab a piece of paper. It's white so you can see it better. Again, I apologize for this dark background for the map that created. Now, what I enjoy about the limited palette is incorporating that bit of color that makes it really accentuate, accentuates the image even more. Not ready for Actually, I'm not ready for color yet. So I'm even going to remove our green watch face. I do like this. I just don't know if it is going to work. I need to be careful with these uh, with this eye and the eyebrow. I'm going to lose that. I really like this. Um. Can I do it? Well, I can do whatever I want. I am not crazy about this stuff. That's why I have this, <laughs> possibly using this to cover up the text. I don't want this text either. There's this. Uh, I think it's a case of I fell in love with this back, this black and white background, and it's just going to have to be saved for another collage. We'll keep it as surreal as possible. So here's another watch face that can act as a background. Actually, pretty well. And I did want other clocks and stuff coming out. I'm thinking about the background. This, I think this is just a little too noisy. It may benefit from a background in Photoshop. Coming in there and creating a whole new background. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to time-lapse and do some more thinking.
from because I think I'm leaning towards it for the color source in this image. And I'll just explain to you how I try and commit a very careful cut like this with using the X-Acto knife. I obviously cut around the majority of the excess paper and normally don't do that. I would try to keep the excess paper up, but that wasn't the case for today because I wanted to see how it would work. So what I do is I draw an X in the middle, just a straight X. And what I'm doing here is I'm pressing lightly to puncture the paper with the edge of the blade and then pulling the blade gently across using not just the tip, but the majority of the blade itself because that is very strong and doesn't get a lot of use uh, when I cut. So now I have some sections and in a way it's easier to cut. I could come in now with my scissors, but I normally don't. Now I want to cut along that edge and I'd like it to be as precise as possible because this is a shape, so there's precision with shape. It doesn't always happen in my world. And still using that same technique, pressing down and using the edge of the blade to do most of the work. Moving the circle gently as I cut. So I'll do a little cutting. I get to a place where I need to move. I get to a place where I need to move and I just pull and I just barely, here we go, we have a section on it. So here I am, I'm starting the cut, pulling. And now I need to move the image to continue the cut. So I keep the blade in place and I just move the image, keep the blade where I was cutting. I try very hard not to remove the blade from its path. This is not gonna be a perfect cut. <laughs> I can see already. There's a lot of white border there. So if that's the case, I come back, same thing. It just has to be a little bit more careful and get as much of that white border as I can so I just have straight color. Sometimes I have to cut into the color and it's kind of like when you're a little kid with coloring books, you didn't stay in the lines and they note that. I, I was the kid that didn't stay in the lines. <laughs> it's the same thing with collage. So I'm just moving my blade slowly moving my image as I need to. See, this also isn't going to be a straight cut. I can come back and clean it. I'd rather not. I'd rather it just be the first time around, a nice clean cut, but mostly I have to come back. So I'm going to come back, probably cut into the color so I know I have straight color and no white border. I don't want a white border. I just want color. Still some white. So it's not going to be a perfect circle. That's what happens with analog. We don't get perfect circles. I could scan it into Photoshop and remove the white background. That's fine, but I do pride myself with having hybrid collages where, yes, I do like digital and I will use digital, but mostly at least 90% of my collages that I post here are analog, cut and paste. And this is how I do it. So I'm almost done with this inside. It wasn't as successful as I would have liked it to be. It's a lot of practice and if you're new to collage and you're new to using the X-Acto knife and if you think I made this look easy, well, first of all, I'm flattered <laughs> because it's, it's messy. But if you try it next and you're frustrated, that's because I've been doing this now for a very long time and I, I, I usually have success with it. And I can come back and clean it up. I'm trying to learn how to jelly, jelly plate print. And I'm not having any success with that because I don't do it. It's a, it's a skill. And that, that's been a little frustrating for me. And I'm like almost afraid to go back to it because I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to be good at this. No, it's just something I haven't done before and <laughs> I need to practice with it. So now I'm here with the scissors. I'm cutting along the line on the outside, which is a lot easier. Again, maintain that path. Do not deviate from the path. Allow the blade to do its cut. If you cut a little bit into the color, at least you're 
getting the white border out of the way. In my case, I want to get rid of the white border. I like to do long cuts, so I begin deep into the scissors blades. I don't like to do little snips with the tip of the scissor blade. I like to let the blade do its work. All the way around. See, all the way I bring that blade in deep. So it just needs me to direct it and slice through. I need to get these blades sharpened also. They're pretty good. They're still fairly sharp, but I, I really need to sharpen them. I've never sharpened them. I've had them for quite some time, but it's time for them to get sharp. Okay, this was fairly successful. I'm not displeased with it. There's a couple little white lines that I'm being very picky about. And I'll use the scissors on the outside to get rid of those. I would like to use my X-Acto knife for this white line in here. Again, the same exact approach. Find a spot to start and cut. Pull the blade and just go slow. Always go slow. Always pull it away from you. Do not, <laughs> don't get your finger in the way of this. I mean, that's common sense, but it goes without saying. Um, keep your fingers away from your X-Acto blade. Pull it, pull it away from you. I'm kind of like pulling it towards me, but I'm sitting down and I'm, I have some control here and I just keep my fingers out of the way more than anything. That was messy. Okay, that was a little messier than I liked, but that happens, so I just adjust. Sometimes I come back in and I clean more off. Now I got a lot of little, little tiny scraps. I try to keep the area clean because those little scraps can mess up your next cut. So we're just trying to even it out now. And if I cut more, cut more off, it's not a big deal. It, it's, it's paper, it's a collage, it's absurd, it, it, it's allowable. And you know, hopefully I have enough ephemera to cover it up. Okay, it's not the greatest cut in the world, but it'll do. I did have the image actually of the artist that created this piece. <laughs> and I just cut around and tried to make up for this person being there. And here I go again with that black and white image I really loved. It is busy, it is busy. And I don't like this text. So I was thinking something along the lines of this. And he would be here. Cover up our... Okay. Thinking out loud. He would be here. That would cover up the artist. I went ahead and glued down the eye to the to the um, the watch face, and I think I want to do something like this. Like it's even more off the paper, um, off the uh, off the edge. That's pretty good. I I like this because. And now the hand here looks like it's connected to this space. I'm gonna set the spectrum off to the side. I need to cut this up. This is a little messy. How to do this? I will bring in my trusty typography ruler. It is my favorite straight edge of all time. Typography was not my favorite class of all time, but I uh, had to take it. I learned a lot. Typography is awesome. It's around us everywhere, and I have nothing but respect, mad respect for typographers, but I am not a typographer. So I just want the straight edge to make a straight edge. I got my straight edge down. I'm pressing down. I come in with my blade and again, using the body of the blade right along the straight edge to make a nice clean cut. It's very uneven. I'm trying to make it as even as possible. I may 
need to come back a couple of times. I use the mat and the, uh, I don't know what these, the technical term is for these lines, but these lines on the mat, I try to use them to make the straightest edge as possible. And that's pretty good. That's not too bad. Because again, I am going to scan it and it'll be nice and clean in Photoshop. So I will use to my benefit this uh, photo box from the magazine. They, they have a nice straight line and I will use that to the best of my ability and make a nice cut to get rid of this white border. Okay. Now this is a wonderful black and white photograph from the magazine. It is a perfect composition. No, I don't like this. And I don't like this either. I would like to cut them out, but I want to, I wanted to keep this in. Um, so it's problematic when this happens. Uh, I don't really have anything. I thought about, well, we could do something like this. I, 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 I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to do this. He is our focal point. Now he's, he's a little off centered. I want to do this. Do I want that train in there? Trying to see what this would look like. Something like that. I had thought about using this clock because it fit almost perfectly. And then the, our black and white background is just that. It acts as a, okay. So I got a little bit of the train coming through here. And here was Spectrum. I thought about bringing it in. Okay, I'm gonna think again in time lapse. This is taking a little longer than I anticipated. <laughs> is coming together. I think we're coming to the end. I did end up cutting off that text. I didn't want to deal with it and created my own composition. Background is strong, but it's not overtaking the image. It's not competing with the image. I didn't want that. The bigger it was, I felt it was taking from the image. So I'm liking the way this looks. I like the placement of these pieces i'm going to commit them and oh my gosh i didn't even i didn't even tape down that little area and it it stayed there so that that says something i'm going to use tape to keep everything in place just a little bit of tape right there and here Everything is in place the way I want it to. I wanted this about right here. It's a little messy here. Very, very small bit of white right there. I'm just going to use my scissors to clean it up just a little bit on the forehead. I think that's it. I think that'll be good. Oh my gosh, that even looks... <laughs> the other side of the actual image, the watch, actually, <laughs> so I'm using, going to use this, but this flipped on the other side. I'm like, oh, that looks pretty also. <laughs> Whatever was on the other side. I try to check the other side of the magazine pages before I cut in case there's something I like even more on the other side. So I, I always try to be cognizant of anything that was there. And I think I'd like it to be this, like this. Okay. That's what I want. Another piece of tape, please. Go ahead. Grab that. All right. Let's see. Okay, this is, I'm 
really, really liking this. So the black and white, I want to make sure this hand is not here because the hand is gray tone and then this building is gray tone and it doesn't look bad, but I'd rather make sure that there's a black border here. That's going to add beautiful contrast. A little bit of the train is coming through here. That doesn't bother me. Uh, the train is not the focal point. It's actually getting covered up. And I really wanted the hand to contrast with this dark area to look like it was uh, an extension, like the arm, that this is his new arm. So I'm really liking the way this is coming out so far. I'm going to just tape it down here because I'm going to need to glue it. I can't really use packing tape here because there's nothing, there's nowhere I can, the only thing I could do is cut through here and tape it the, um, the back that way. That's not such a bad idea. Um, but I think I'll just use, I'll think about it. I have this piece left and I thought about tucking it here. It is possible because it's, uh, well, it has threes. It's a watch face. I think, um, yeah, I think I will because there's a lot going on here and this will balance it out. Now, here we have our spectrum that we cut out carefully. I thought about using it. Let me put this black wash face over here. I want to cover this part so we don't see the body. And I was going to do something, I think I was going to do something along the lines of this. Does this work? Do I like this? We have color. <laughs> we have that bit of color that's coming out. Um, it's a nice contrast. I am limited. I kind of like that because I like how we can see in this negative space that we cut out so carefully at the very beginning. Now it's up against color that is very, that's very interesting to me. And that's working. That's working. Okay. I'm going to adjust it a little, play with it a little bit more. Just playing with it. So that being said, do I want this in here, in this corner maybe? Do I need it? No, I want to do this. Uh, hard to know. And do I want to add any more? Um, I feel the answer is a resounding no. I don't think I should add any more. I think it's, I think it'll be too much if I add any more. I'm coming to the end here. So what I decided to do is I will um, go ahead and make just a, a cut here. Just a careful cut, nothing spectacular. So I can attach the image to the background. And I, I can use glue. I could even use um, spray adhesive, but I'm lazy and I don't feel like it. Um, let's see, this is where I want it. And now we have this little space here so I can just tape it and it'll stay on. Uh, it won't be on super tight, but my main image, my focal point, will be attached to this background. And no need for the glue. So, burnish it on a bit. Now it's on there and I can remove this little bit of tape, drafting tape that kept it in place. I also decided to stay with this black um, ew, wait a second, we have a bit of a problem here. Put my tape back because I taped this on. Kind of needed to do it later. Um, oh boy. 
So very gently, I'm pulling this tape up. I made a little mistake. I did that too soon. Ooh, and I don't want to hurt my image. And of course I burnished it on. So I'm pulling it up. Okay, I really need to be careful next time. I'm not going to do too much more. Um, I'll keep that in place. I shouldn't have taped it down yet because I'm, I'm not done and I wanted to get this in here. And I can't because of the tape. Interesting. What have I done? Okay, here's another option. Well, it's not really an option. It's going to be the same problem. <laughs> I'm going to tuck this in. Everything's delicate and I have made things a lot more challenging <laughs> for this image than I intended to. Get this out. Okay. I just looped it, <laughs> looped it in the back way. And this is what I wanted to do. Okay. And also, get these here. That's where I wanted it. Um, so I had wanted to tuck this here, like that. And the reason I wanted to do that to cover this part of the face is because it says it has a brand name on it and I'm not really worried about uh, copyright um, infringement. I'm not trying to you know, do anything like that here, but I wanted to cover up the brand name. And here we go, okay. Okay, that's good. I think that is it. I just need to attach this we can put it into Photoshop and make it nice and clean and we'll have a video. So there you go. It's all done guys. Thanks for joining me this week. Let's see what we come up with next time.